I'm a embedded intelligence team leader in Data 60, CSIRO's Data 61. I've been working for nearly two decades and, and for much of that, I've been lucky to work closely with our agriculture and food uh, researchers and pioneering technologies for the ag sector. Uh, we, we take that early research uh, and you know we, we work with visionary partners uh, to take that to industry and that's what we uh, want to do here again. So you might have heard of uh, actually some of our uh, things. Uh, recently, we, uh, we've had uh, a, a little bit of a thing in the newspaper from, from last week there. So I'd like you to draw your attention to technologies one and two listed here. This is the, the series uh, Smart Ear Tag and the Edison's eShepherd technology, which uh, I was personally involved with. Uh, but I should add that CSIRO has contributed to others on this list also. So, you know, CSIRO uh, tends to uh, uh, research, you know, agricultural trends, and we've been looking at the, you know, uh, what's coming up, you know, for the for the next decade. And in this tradition of, of taking these, you know, early looks at technologies and challenges uh, for the, say, the agri-foods industries, uh, we've taken a, a look at that in the, you know, what, what the industry is likely to face, uh, you know, now and in the near future. And we've brought together deep expertise from computer science, sciences, uh, engineering, and combined them with our experienced agricultural expertise. And few organisations in the world can actually achieve bringing that sort of capability uh, together in the one spot. So once again, though, we're, we're looking for partners who share our vision and want to work with us at this early stage and want to help us deliver these solutions to industry. And that's why we're presenting to our industry audience first, actually, today, um, whereas you know, previously we would have presented this uh, academically first. So you're really getting a, a look at the, the cutting edge research and research in progress uh, at the moment. So less than 12 months ago, we started our journey on developing and integrating uh, technologies for provenance, trust, and, and automated compliance for the supply chain integrity. And we've, uh, we've made a little video actually, which we hope cap captures the essence of this. And uh, I'll, I'll like to share that with you now. Every year, more than 70% of the beef produced in Australia is exported. And this product ends up in many different countries. Beef exports are valued at more than $10 billion per year, so it's important that Australia delivers a premium, safe and healthy product to the world to maintain this market share. As a result, there are many regulatory systems in place, and this regulatory compliance takes lots of time and money. Administrative systems need to be developed, reports need to be completed and monitored, Countless forms need to be found and filled with data that may or may not be trustworthy. And these are just the rules for Australia. Producers also need to make sure they comply with regulations from key export markets. Australian producers are renowned for very high standards of animal health and welfare and environmental stewardship. However, in a fragmented and complex supply chain, this message is easily lost. So how can we ensure that industry can fulfill government requirements without being overwhelmed by regulatory burden? And how can we ensure that the data provided is objective and trustworthy, providing the information on provenance that consumers want? We believe the answer lies in a process called automated compliance. Sensors on or around animals can be used to automatically, continuously and objectively measure critical events. This data is then used to assess compliance with coded rules on the device or in the cloud that digitally represent regulatory requirements and welfare guidelines. By comparing data from different sources, we can attribute a trustworthy metric. The compliance data is collected and stored in a way that can't be tampered with. This data can then be used to auto-populate regulatory forms when required. So everyone ends up happy. As a result, Australian cattle are raised in the best conditions and producers extend their reputation for high-quality product by having tools that allow them to easily tell the world of the great work they do. Governmental regulatory requirements are also met, ensuring products are of the appropriate quality. And consumers have peace of mind knowing the food on their plate has been produced in the best conditions possible. Every year. 
So, uh, yeah, well, look, that's my work done. I, I don't need to actually keep talking. You've pretty much heard everything now. But, um, uh, look, there is a, there's a lot in there, and, uh, and of course, I'll, I'll unpack a little bit of that. But I will actually only briefly touch on that, and there'll be other talks throughout the day which will dive in deep to, to each of the technologies that I'm talking about, as well as some of the, some of the other ones that are outside of the area that, um, uh, that I was uh, managing. So, uh, to, to truly achieve, achieve, achieve provenance, trust, and compliance from farm to fork, we need technologies from farm to fork, and then, in fact, back again. And uh, so, you know, what you're seeing here is is that um, you know, uh, you know, like how, like, oh, sorry, um, you know, how uh, you know we can look at uh, uh, tracking from uh, the uh, farm through to the uh, market, uh, market or warehouses or distribution. Uh, and so that tracking and tracing and that anomaly detection that happens through that, that's, uh, that's another uh, uh, package that's going to be uh, presented today. Uh, you know, you will also want the mechanisms that this is going back from the fork back to the farm in a way. And this is uh, looking at biological origins and, and how to uh, you know, trace uh, meat back to the you know, farm or the region of origin that it came from. I'm going to... Uh, focus on uh, this sort of like innocent and innocuous looking little uh, section here, uh, which, which is actually around um, on farm and, and on arrival to, to processing facility. It is actually, in fact, quite a rabbit hole. And I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of the technologies that we've developed and integrated uh, that we're hoping to, you know, that, that you will actually learn from, uh, you know, potentially use, integrate uh, and even commercialize. So don't stress if uh, you want more detail uh, on anything that I mentioned. Um, those other talks will go into way more depth and uh, and, and, and discussions around those um, throughout the day. Okay, so we know that uh, you know, here's our sort of a, a canonical uh, supply chain, and uh, we know that we there are technologies uh, you know already emerging where we can take uh, snapshots of, uh, of information and and store that. At different transactions uh, at different transaction points through the supply chain so you know that might be you know on, on arrival or leaving the farm or on arrival uh, to the processing plant you know departing you know the processing plant in, you know, in boxes and being tracked and then even you know recording off when it gets to the uh, to the wet, uh, retail so i'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that blockchain is not the answer but it is a very, very good tool. So, <laughs> um, so you know, this is sort of, I guess, a you know, a, st a state at the moment of of uh, you know, of utilization of blockchain, which is a mechanism of giving us sort of uh, provenance and, and sort of you know, surety that uh, that the, you know, the data has been captured and, and can't be tampered with. Uh, but I guess the question is, you know, what about the other times through the supply chain? So, you know, there's a lot of other activity that happens in between these different snapshots. And you know why? Why aren't they important as well to, to capture? So, the you know the uh, the other question is, in fact, actually, what about um, you know prior uh, to leaving the farm? There's a whole there's a whole you know story of the you know on on animal uh, sorry on farm uh, animals lifetime uh, of of activities and uh, things that you may want to uh, uh, record. So. Compliance is is actually one of these motivating things that you might you know want to uh, you know record, and it, it's a, it's a it is you know there's quite a lot of um, uh, what's the word uh, yeah, quite a lot of uh, uh, documentation and and, and, and bookkeeping etc. That's required to to keep this. And the thing is is that you know Australian beef you know is actually trusted as a premium product, um, and and you know. Uh, the world basically trusts that you know we are doing good animal handling and, and handling of welfare, um, you know, health, uh, healthy and safe, safe uh, meat, and, and that these processes, um, uh, you know, are, are happening, and these, you know, and, and mechanisms of capturing this, uh, are maintaining our sort of standards and trust. And so there's this uh, assumption that this is all happening, and that's how you know, and and that's really you know, really how a lot of trust is. Uh, uh, is actually currently maintained. Um, there are other things as well, um, such as uh, prog or programs. So, uh, you know, you can see, you know, different uh, sort of, you know, compliance programs here. 
there's actually a whole lot of them. There are a lot of them, and you saw the poor farmer there, you know, weighed down with all this extra you know, documentation. And I think the reality is is that this trend of of you know, record keeping uh, is just likely to grow uh, because people, are, you know, uh, you know, different parts of the industry are demanding you know, more uh, you know, trust and evidence uh, about sort of the claims um, of how things have been produced. So there are other things such as you know guidelines and, and, and programs. Um, so other than welfare, you know, there's you know there's the organics, um, you know, there's uh, the you know, grass fed, um, there's uh, you know, the fact that it was made in Australia or you know, halal uh, certified, etc. There's there's a whole host of different programs, and and these things also uh, you know potentially add uh, you know, trust to consumers and, and to other parts of the supply chain as well. The trouble with trust is that you know it's it, it's a it's a slippery thing to sort of define, um, and it, you know it's, it's we know that it's uh, you know it's, it has to be earned, right? And and we know that it's also you know easily easily lost, and uh, you know that's that's true for uh, for you know the red meat supply chain as well. So it doesn't take a, a lot of uh, you know uh, some bad things happening for the whole industry actually just to, to suffer uh, some sort of trust from that. So I guess, you know, we we all innately know that, that you, you really shouldn't be trusting a claim you know, when, when you have no history uh, with that person uh, or any supporting evidence for a claim. So, you know, if, if, if a farmer says that, yes, you know, these cows had good welfare, uh, you know, does it really mean that we should believe that? And we would sort of say probably not. But what if it was possible for the, the cattle to actually report whether they had been being, had been treated well or not? You know, so that were, that may well add then trust to to that assertion of the of the farmer, so long as you actually trust uh, the reporting of the cattle. That is, so what we do there is we we add data provenance uh, as an underpinning uh, technology to this to. Uh, to allow that to, to allow extra data about the knowledge, uh, sorry, extra knowledge about the data uh, that is uh, being reported from the animals, ensuring that that data can't be modified or deleted or, or even accidentally lost. So, um, in our demonstrator, um, you know, data from the animals uh, and drinking troughs, uh, etc., uh, can actually be overheard by each other. So. This sort of adds you know, one mechanism of already gaining some additional trust by devices being able to talk to each other. Uh, information is actually also uh, relayed directly to satellite and across to our uh, uh, gateways on the farm. So we have multiple gateways on the farm and the data is stored there into um, a private uh, secure blockchain. Uh, and we actually then run additional trust algorithms uh, at the edge there that we can so we built the, the trust on, on top of that, uh, yeah, that data uh, provenance. So I guess then the challenge becomes that, um, you know, you've, you've got the, the data provenance and the, and the data trust, but you, you actually want to automatically fulfill uh, compliances rather than having to uh, you know, manually take that information and convert it into, you know, whether or not you're compliant with you know, different things and filling out forms. And, uh, and that's actually what we've done with inside our architecture. Uh, another thing that, that uh, this architecture does is publishes those uh, outcomes of uh, you know, the compliance to a public blockchain. Uh, and that gives some sort of assurity around those statements also can't be modified after the fact. And we also do a nice little trick where we uh, take a, a snapshot and use that sort of as a special little crypto key that allows us to be able to make sure we publish that to the, the public blockchain. And should we ever want to go back and order to the private um, uh, data that's from the farm, um, we know that with that key, even though it doesn't share any data about the, about the private uh, blockchain data, um, that key does tell us, however, whether or not that data has ever been modified or changed. So effectively, it stops uh, sort of any cheating uh, after the fact if, if an order comes along we can use this key to really validate that um, the data on the private blockchain hasn't actually been altered. So yes, yeah, so automated compliance is definitely something um, that uh, you know you're going to want, and uh, and something that we've uh, we've done a fair bit on in this project. So the automated farm provenance demonstrator 
is actually a research test bed and it was developed to, to be able to you know, showcase and develop on-farm technologies for data provenance, data trust and automatic compliance. These sort of three underpinning technologies, um, we believe that these are going to be required for the you know, future of supply chain integrity. So that data provenance again is really around that immutable, unchangeable uh, mechanism of storing data securely, uh, having it just you know stored distributedly so it can't be lost, uh, can't be deleted. The data trust is is around how do you authenticate the that 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 data, you know, for, by using different sources rather than the data itself, but using other sources that, that are related to that to be able to get sort of independent um, confirmation around, around the data that's ha uh, that, and that data that's been claimed all those claims. And then finally, automated compliance actually builds on top of these two systems and uses that trusted and uh, untamperable data to be able to, you know, uh, just, you know make uh, decisions about uh, you know, compliance outcomes, and these were the goals that we want to achieve in, in the twelve in the twelve months. Just one more minute, Phil. Sorry sure. to rush you. Yeah, no problems. Yep. So there were four research streams: um, data uh, collection and generation. And so we went out on the farm and we sensorized a whole heap of stuff. We got cameras and we actually made a video annotator that can um, annotate all these massive amounts of uh, data and video that we collected. We sensorized up the, the cattle. You know, no, you don't need uh, to have all this, you know, the markings and the collars and, and stuff. You really just need sort of like a tag technology and some Internet of Things devices uh, out on the field. So it's actually all quite low cost. That's the series tag there on an animal. The tag itself can actually generate data about the animal's behavior through machine learning. And we've got other mechanisms as well of uh, doing some ground truth around how the herds interact with, uh, with each other to, to do some additional algorithms around animals. Um, just the cattle experiments alone um, over a nine day period generated a ton of data and we were able to use that to generate a lot of our algorithms. Uh, thanks to COVID-19, uh, we, we couldn't do the remaining physical deployments and so we had to jump across to making a simulator, but actually that was a sort of a blessing in disguise because the simulator actually allows us to do all sorts of things like uh, develop our trust and provenance and compliance engines uh, without actually being able to subject cows to say lack of water or things like that, you know, sort of things that we want to test for, for compliance. The provenance, um, there were threads there with cybersecurity throughout the whole lot blockchain on the edge and that a high transactional blockchain, so a new type of blockchain that allows lots of small bits of data to be sent um, in real time and published it to, to the world. And this is the architectural overview. Um, so, you know, where we, uh, you know, we essentially have stuff on the farm, uh, smart, smart ear tags and, and smart devices talking to that, that provenance engine on the edge to capture all that data securely and, and untamperable generating trust values from the, you know, from the uh, animals of their behaviors and what they're doing and, and where they are, and then pushing that up to uh, a compliance engine, which, which automatically um, uh, determines whether or not we're meeting various uh, compliance needs, which is then finally published onto a public blockchain. Um, we developed a trust engine, I've already mentioned that. And, uh, and I guess the, the last thing I want to just mention is just that, you know, there are there are both uh, on ear tag rules. So we have a, a, a rural engine that runs on the ear tag as well as a rural engine that runs in the cloud. And the two seamlessly talk together. And the cloud one pulls together the on ear, uh, on -ear rural outcomes as well as Bureau of, Meteor Bureau, Bureau of Meteorology weather data to um, determine um, outcomes about individual animals as well as herds. So yeah, and that's it. So uh, you know, it's there, there's there's a lot to uh, get through today, and um, uh, I hope this gives you a bit of a teaser for what's to come. And uh, enjoy, and ask lots lots of questions, and uh, please engage with us uh, if you find something interesting. Thank you.